If you wish to ask a question at this time, please signal by pressing star 1 on your telephone keypad. Please ensure the mute function on your telephone is switched off to allow your signal to reach our equipment. We will take our first question from Brian Fritz of Sporting News. Please go ahead. Hey, Paul, thanks again for doing this. Sure, man, thank you. Uh, what's, I wanted to talk about Tommaso Ciampa because I think uh, some people, I know I was a little bit surprised to see him debut on the main roster in February. And the timing that went into that, there was already some talk that he was injured. I don't think we knew the severity of it. So what went into the decision of having him go to the main roster at that time? And what was known about his injury at that time? Because looking back in hindsight, it seems kind of strange now knowing that he needed surgery. Yeah, so it was – obviously we knew about it. We knew that that was going to be a, an opportunity uh, – not an opportunity, but a, a, ne a necessity going forward. But the decision was still made that let's let's do this um, with the main roster. Let's give him that exposure. Um, he'll take some time off. We'll, we'll use that in whatever way we can. He'll take the time off, get fixed up, and be back and be better than ever. Um, and and – uh, you know, and move forward from there. Unfortunately, you know, with, with the type of injury he had, it went from one thing to another very rapidly, and um, we couldn't wait. It, it sort of changed from being something that was manageable to being something that, that we, we just, you know, this is not some, a risk we're willing to take for anything. So uh, we just moved to him immediately doing the surgery at that point in time and starting on the road to recovery. So. Um, a lot of thought put into all the conversations, but clearly something we knew about, and um, there, there was a plan for him on, on all aspects of it, in, including the, you know, he's going to need to take some time off down the road here very soon to, to get this fixed. So basically was the plan just, hey, we think we can get him through takeover, but then once doctors looked at him a little bit closer, they said, hey, this is something that needs to be taken care of right now, this is serious, and he cannot wrestle until, you know, this is settled and come to find out that he was going to be on the shelf longer than you anticipated. Well, no, so we knew the length of time probably that it was going to take for a return anyways, but um, as as you're looking at this, right, like there are certain things that are manageable and and you can manage the situation and there's no there's no risk, no damage, no anything. You're, you're just managing the, the symptoms and the situation and getting to where you want to have, is, you know it's something that you're going to have to take care of eventually, right? Um, then that situation changed. It just, instead of being manageable, it progressively got worse. Um, as soon as we saw it progressively getting worse, we realized the situation was not something that was manageable for us um, and for him, and we made the decision to, or you know, with him, obviously, uh, to go in the direction that we did. We will now take our next question from Mike Johnson of PWInsider.com. Please go ahead. Hey. Hey, Paul. How hey, are you? So close to first. You're not first, you're last, Mike. It happens. Um, I wanted to talk about <laughs> I wanted to talk about the ripple effect of the Ciampa injury in that obviously there was a plan in place for Johnny Gargano. While we've seen Aleister Black and Ricochet on the main roster, Gargano's kind of disappeared from Raw and SmackDown. Um, was there a decision made to rescind him being called up because of the Ciampa deal, maybe to try and preserve the storyline for later on? And, uh, you know, how much of a, how much of a preparation and, and, and change in preparation happens when you know there are people who are leaving and suddenly now they're back on the NXT brand? Oh, yeah, no, that's definitely, um, yeah. From the NXT standpoint, it was a, a full-on creative shift. Um, from a once once the chop injury takes place and we realize that we have to reboot some things, then there are a lot of thoughts and ideas that come out of it, and then those decisions are made right, and um, they involved a lot of different things from. Gargano's main roster opportunity to NXT's opportunities, everything else. So a lot of different things are thrown out there, and then they're discussed, and we pick the direction that we did. And where it goes from here, you know, obviously what you'll, you will have to wait and see. But um, a lot of thought and, I did, you know, effort and ideas go into that. There's a lot of things that are thrown around and, like, ideas in different directions to go, and then you, you know, obviously. 
so you determine the best one. What's or that what conversation? What's that conversation like with Vince McMahon where it's, hey, I know you want Gargano, but we need him and you can't have him yet. Look, like, how does that conversation go down? Is it, is yeah. it more of an argument? Right. Is it more of a debate? Or how, how, does, how does that conversation flow? No, <laughs> that's not a conversation at all where I go, like, you can't have him. Uh, you know, all of this stuff, and, and this is where I think people get uh, – confused about the relationship. None of this stuff happens without Vince's sign-off or approval in some manner, right? Like, he is... It, it's, it, it's, all, it's all one team and it's all for the betterment of the product and the talent in general, right? So it's not about well, this or that or, you know, NXT needs this, you can't have that, and we need this and we're going to take it from you so you can't have that. It's, it's not that at all. It's a creative uh, synergy between both. Um, you know, when something unfortunate, whether it's this situation or any other, uh, you know, in our business, that's a, just a reality. Things happen, and, and when they happen, everybody has to sit down, come up with a whole bunch of different suggestions about different ways to go and how, how to get around this and solve it and, and do it in the best manner possible. I often say that sometimes the best things come out of that chaos. Like chaos, for whatever reason, sometimes creates this beautiful storyline. And um, some of the, the storylines that have happened over time that I think are ones that are the, the best ones came out of, we were planning to go here, then some unfortunate series of events happened, and you go like, ugh, well, we have to reboot, but what if we did this? Oh, my God, that's even better. Like, you know, it just, it, it just happens that way. Um, it's an internal conversation about what is best for everyone. Um, and... It's, it's just reasonably talked about. We all make decisions, and, and obviously they're dominoes, so they affect everything. What you know um, affected Raw, it affected SmackDown, it affected uh, where they were thinking about going. Then that affected NXT and where we were thinking about going. So it's just kind of a, a reshift. You come up with a bunch of different ideas, and everybody uh, gets to a point where we all sign off on them, and Vince goes, absolutely, this sounds great, good plan. Here we go.